Uh, <laughs> welcome everyone to the Miss Art World podcast. Super excited to have our co-host Samuel Cooksey with us with Samuel Cooksey Project. Howdy everybody. There you go. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and we have a very special guest, Betsy Eisenberger. Good job. Oh, yes. I yeah. looked, I Googled how to pronounce your name. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, in in Germany, they just they just pronounce every letter in all of their the entire language. So if you just pronounce every single letter of my name, it's right. Great. Oh, really? <laughs> Most people forget the S. That's the thing. Um, Betsy, you're an awesome artist. So uh, you've shown all over the world uh, and you're just phenomenal. Um, you are the, I'm, I don't want to say founder, but the original melting popsicle um, artist. Uh, tell our listeners where they could find you now so that they can look you up and kind of have a visual of what your work is like before we get into well everything is online now my website or my instagram is probably the easiest um it's just my full name betsy enzensberger and you can usually just write e-n-z without writing the full name <laughs> and it comes up <laughs> um yeah and that's that's my website as well so there's like a variety of everything that I've done on both of those sites. And then I also have a shop where you can purchase small items. Um, but then there's galleries all over the world that have my work. Um, everyone has a different inventory. So, um, you know, if you're looking for, you know, spiked pieces, there's a ton in Sweden, oddly enough. Um, <laughs> you know, things like that. <laughs> what got you started on the melting popsicle? Well, it started as ice cream. Um, I was making ice creams and um, that started from, uh, I was working with resin on panels and doing some sculptural things. And I was making all of my panels melt into the ground. And so I just kept thinking like melting things, melting things. And I'm like, oh, ice cream is the natural for me because I really like ice cream more than popsicles. But then a friend of mine suggested popsicles and, um, you know, I just went with that one more. It was, I was able to be more um, fine arty, more designy with the popsicle versus the ice cream. The ice cream is kind of, there's not a lot of room for design, I guess you could say as far, cause it's more the shape of it. Um, but with the popsicle, if you have a real simple shape you can get really fun and uh, artsy with the design, so. That's kind of, that's why I focus on those. Okay. Yeah. And when did you start creating? Like, when did you become an artist? When did that, how did that journey become about? Always. Yeah. <laughs> um, my mother was an art teacher growing up. So in lieu of TV, she would say, oh, you know, just do this little project I'm giving my kids at school. And, and I ended up just loving that kind of stuff. I would um, gravitate towards you know, using my hands to do things over wanting to watch TV or something. I was always a really outdoorsy kid. Um, and then there was a point where I would record Bob Ross and I would like go to the beach with my friends and then I would come home and watch it and paint it. Like it was my thing. I just, I had to do that every day. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Creating is just, I mean, even now when I'm not working in the studio on my work, I come home and I'm like, what can I make here? Like, oh, well, I'll, I'll knit something. I'm always, always, always just making things. It just feels good. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What kind of, so you talked about Bob Ross and probably painting, but what was your first style of art that you created? Well, I studied abstract painting in college. Oh, interesting. I know. Um, and there's, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't have even known what resin was back then, or, you know, there's not really like a class you can take, you know? Um, so I was doing abstract paintings, showing, selling in Los Angeles. Um, and then it, it always got sculptural on me and I would try and like, you know, push it back and be like, no, no, I'm not a sculptor, I'm a painter. And, you know, and then, and then it would naturally get sculptural and I'd pull it back and I'd say no. And then, and then I just 
I kind of just let it go. I was making all these ice creams. I wasn't showing them yet though. I was kind of like, oh, well, is, is anyone going to take me seriously? You know, I also don't take myself that seriously. <laughs> um, and then I showed a couple friends in the art world and they just said, go for it. Just, you know, did they debut the ice cream and the popsicles together and, you know, just, you know, be, do you, you know? And when I stopped caring what other people thought, um, like my whole, my whole mindset changed. I just said, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to go. I'm going to have fun with this. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I mean, this is really my passion and making them in different ways and different sizes. And, you know, it just, it's just, it's all I want to do <laughs> all day. Like I get up probably five in the morning. That's just my natural wake up time. And I'm like, Oh, coffee and then studio right away. You know, love it. What time do you go to bed then? If I'm early, early, embarrassingly early. <laughs> I won't even say a number. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me sound so old. <laughs> it's always a, uh, um, whenever I talk to people and they talk about how early they wake up, I'm like, Oh, that'd be awesome for me to wake up that early. And then I, the next question is, you know, what time do you go to bed? And then it's just like, now I can never go to bed that early. I need to go to bed like 11. So then it makes sense for me to wake up later than six. I know but I, I got into the, I don't know if it's a natural thing or if I had a, um, a dog that was really senile in the end of her life and she would, we would finally get her to go to sleep early and then she would wake me up at three four five like and so I was just like roll out of bed and and then she passed away um last year and I just haven't my sleeping patterns haven't changed and with this pandemic it's like I don't have a full-time job anymore like I don't have to get up for anything I just do so mm -hmm. I blame it on the dog <laughs> <laughs> um are you getting another dog or was oh I got two thing? Okay. Got two more. Yeah. I know. I just, I love them so much and I never wanted to replace the one that passed away, but you can, you really can't anyway, because they're so different. Mm -hmm. So we rescued one and then, um, we decided that the two dog dynamic would be better. So we got another and they're, they're actually right next to me right that's, now. <laughs> that's what happens with COVID. They, you get the one animal that you're taking care of and then they talk you into how much better it is to have two so they have companions and oh yeah you know they're pack animals the, exactly. you know there's all this justification you're like but it's also twice the vet bill <laughs> yeah, exactly i think that's what the vet because that's what talked me into getting uh, a second cat was because they were like well they they're best they need a companion what happens when you're not there and i should have said it's covid I'm always there. There's no yeah. time I'm not there. And I know what these two do when I leave. They do nothing. They sit there <laughs> like companion. I don't know. They just sleep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they're two old dogs too. So they're really mellow, which I love. Mm -hmm. You know, if they were puppies, maybe they would play, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so know. nice to uh, rescue an older dog. One, they feel, I feel every time I've ever rescued something that's older, they feel so much more appreciative, almost. Just kind of like, hey, I do love you. Thank you for just like yeah. paying attention to me. Yeah, it's like trying to interact with children. It's like you have that worldly knowledge. You can, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, they've lived their life. They're like, we know that we're just going to be lazy and cuddle and thank you and show you love, but not be too annoying. <laughs> how big let's get back on track part i guess <laughs> how big is your biggest uh piece as you go through um on your website um and you have like the small ones and but you also have the large ones how big is your biggest piece the jumbo ones are six foot to the top of the stick um and I'm not opposed to making them larger. I just haven't um, yet because I designed that so that when you take the stick out, it fits in my car. <laughs> so I don't have to run to U-Haul. So, I mean, you know, of course I would make them bigger or, you know, but that that's as big as I've gone thus far. I have, you know, a whole technique for making the stick and everything, which is 
possibly the most fun part. I love wood, like especially pine when you sand it down and it, it just smells really good. It's just way different than resin dust, you know? <laughs> so then how do you, how do you get that big of a popsicle stick? Do you just buy like a, a large piece of, I guess you would buy a large piece of wood, but is it like a two by four or? So fun fact, popsicle sticks are made of pine. Okay. So I go to the lumber store and I get a big one by six piece of pine, ideally without a whole lot of knots. And then I, um, I actually, you know, I saw it, sand it, sculpt it. That's the first part of the pop that I make because then each piece of wood is slightly bent, you know? So um, I need to fit that into the slot that I make for the, for the stick perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, you can't just like interchange them, not with wood because wood is, wood is unique. There's always a slight bend. Um, so yeah, that's the first part. That's the first step. And um, maybe my favorite, I don't know. <laughs> How is, I've never worked with resin, but I, I love the um, aesthetic uh, quality of it. How is it working huh. with resin? Um, well, it depends on what type of resin you're using. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say like in comparison to painting, when I was a painter, it was like, you go in and you're like, mm, it feels so good to create and you can get messy and it's like a release. But with resin, you start with your safety equipment. So it's like you put on your respirator and I always wear glasses just so, you know, or goggles, depending on the type of resin, sometimes ear protection, gloves, so that you're immediately hot and sweaty. And then you go in and you're trying to like get around all of your equipment to like see what you're doing. So the, the pouring, the sanding, all that is really, I wouldn't say it's relaxing, but it's challenging. And that's the part that I love the most about this medium is I go in and every day is different because the the chemicals work um, differently in different environments. So if it's really, really hot one day, everything is going to cure very quickly. Um, and it can be detrimental. It can cure too quickly, get too hot. It can crack all this stuff. Um, and then uh, if, it, if it's raining or humid or something, then the resin won't cure properly. It's to me, it's really fun to figure out how to use it because it's, it's a beast. It's like, it's like, it's toxic. And then, you know, so it like, it almost wants to kill you, but you're like, I'm going to control you. And I'm going to figure out how to make you do what I want you to do. And, and then I get custom orders and they're like, can you do this? I'm like, yes. And then I go and, <laughs> you know, mess it up a few times and figure it out. And I don't know, that's so fun to me. So yeah, it's the constant challenge. And with each size, like the large ones is a totally different process than the size down from that, than the size down from that. And, you know, some are solid cast, some are hollow and it's, I don't know, it's a constant challenge, which is really fun for me. I, I don't think long-term I could have done any like painting, which I love and I totally respect painter. I just think um, for me, it wasn't challenging enough. I need more. Mm-hmm. I need injuries. I need, <laughs> I cut the tip of my thumb off last year. And then like, and then I squished this finger and the nail fell off. And it's like, I, my hands are disgusting. I look like I'm 80 years old. Um, you know, it's, but that's fun. I don't know. I love is it. <laughs> it more from the resin that you're getting injured or is it from sanding and like oh, cutting the, the wood? Tools. I use a okay. ton of blades and I'll get like laziness is the worst thing. Cause if you skip a step, you know, something won't cure, or if you use your tools wrong because you're lazy like me, you'll you'll cut yourself. So I use a lot of blades, and then I'll I'll use just the straight razors without any, you know, um, protection, and I'll just psh, cut myself all the time, all the like every single week. It's terrible. <laughs> I have these bottles of rubbing alcohol. I just pour them over my hands because, I mean, I just I need to make sure I'm not like, you know getting infections, but I would just pour the yeah. rubbing alcohol on, put a glove over it, done. <laughs> Try not to cut off any more fingers. That was, that <laughs> took me out for like, I don't know. I took like three days off because of that. <laughs> After you cut your finger, you took three days off? Yeah. 
after three days, I figured I could wrap my thumb small enough that it could fit under a glove. And then I was like, just right back. Dang, yeah, I've been I know, out for like I know. six months. They're like, nope. <laughs> I know, I couldn't, I couldn't. I was so, I just, I was like, ooh, but there's this idea and this, I want to make this. And I don't know, it was fine. So are you <laughs> able to park your car in your garage or is your garage just full of art? My... Um, that's a two part question. So, <laughs> um, I'm currently living out of a small apartment in Palm Springs cause they have really great industrial studio spaces. These are usually, um, rented to like automotive repair shops and stuff, but because of what I do and it's all, you know, compressors and tools, it's not, I could never rent a studio in an artist's community or I'd kill everyone toxic like literally I'd be like hey yeah I'm pouring you're all, like unless you wear a respirator you're gonna die so <laughs> um so I rented this amazing industrial space out here and um that's where all of my finished work is um but so my 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 main home is in Los Angeles right and so at the moment the garage is full of art just a large pieces, the, um, you know, the six foot ones that aren't currently on display. Um, so yeah, right now that is my storage space. Um, and then, and then my studio out here. So. Yeah. Cause knowing artists and going over to Katie's house, there's nothing but like weird mannequins and giant oh. pieces of art that she's using and glitter and just Oh, There's yeah. so much stuff that comes with having creating uh, art that. Uh, That's true. I try to keep that all in my studio because if I bring it home, it just, I'll want to work here. And then it, and plus I'm really big on having other people's art in my home, like that awesome piece there. Um, I like to surround myself with other people's art and I really like to invest what I make in my art back into the community somehow. So I support a bunch of different artists um, and, uh, and I, I try not to bring any of my own here. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, I don't know, I don't wanna get attached. Plus my work does sell pretty quickly. So I just keep it in the studio and I just like, you know, ship out of there and, you know. I love that you have that um, mind frame or whatever um because I'm the same way like I don't want to hang up my own artwork in my house and um it frustrates other people and I'm like no I first off usually I see like all the different problems with it like I'm most of the time not satisfied with how it looks and I really want to see other people's artwork on my wall I have spent so much time looking at this one piece that I don't want to see it anymore I want to see someone else's work Plus you'd end up being critical and you'd say, oh, I could just do this to make it better. And I, I would be self-critical for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's just so many artists that I totally love and want to support and, you know, and it's so great to surround yourself with other people's work. It's just, and, you know, I'm so grateful for the support that I get. And um, also since, I don't know, 2007, I have been managing art galleries in Los Angeles. So I naturally want to support and promote other artists. It's kind of my passion. I want to help people, um, you know, if I can. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if, if I can, you know, post about somebody else's work and they get sales out of it, great. Can you talk a little bit about um, the artist and gallery experience or um, I know a lot of artists get frustrated because they don't, they're not able to get gallery representation. And I know you have got, you have your work all over the world. How, how does that relationship build? Like what tips or advice would you give to artists who want to get into galleries? I think um, what I've seen is a lot of artists just and me too, in the beginning, you know, um, you just, you want to get into a gallery so badly that you don't really end up doing the research that you should do. And you try to get into a space that you love, but maybe isn't right for your work. And it's, you know, it's like a show, you know, you submit to a bunch of shows and you get denied and it's not because your work's not good. It's because it didn't fit in with the show. So that's the same with the gallery. And 
in the beginning, I did the same thing. I'm like, oh, I want to go here. I want to go here. This is great. This is great. But my work doesn't fit in or it doesn't sell, you know? Um, so finding the right fit is the most important thing. And then researching what their submission policies are. I mean, repeat that a bazillion times because I've run galleries. If you submit improperly, you will just get deleted. Like you won't even get looked at. Just read how they want you to submit your work or a lot of them just say no submissions accepted and you just don't, you know, you wait. Um, yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing. And representation is different for different galleries. You know, are they going to spend time marketing you? Is it going to be an online promotion? Um, alternatively, they could do something like um, what my last gallery I worked for, they really spend their time and energy um, supporting you in building up your website, building up your artist statement, all of that, which is all really important. Um, maybe not as many shows, but all of those like nitty gritty things that artists are get kind of lazy on sometimes. Um, um, or my preference are the galleries that will take you to art fairs internationally, which is amazing because, you know, your work gets seen all over, but not every art work is made for an art show. So maybe a gallery setting is better for some artists. Maybe an art fair is a setting for another artist. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so, so many different types of representation. Just need to make sure that it's the right one for you, really. Have you discovered your um, work doing really well in like a certain country? Yes. Um, I mean, like in the United States, for example, I'm California based, but that's not really my market. Um, New York, Florida, Texas are big ones for me. Um, as far as internationally, Sweden is um, pretty good. I had a, um, I did an art fair out there that sold out and um, we was like, what? Like, how do you know these things unless you try them? Um, but so fun. What a wonderful, I mean, I, I think it's a wonderful country anyway, but um, <laughs> even cooler now <laughs> that they like yeah, it. Yeah, your favorite <laughs> now. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, Europe is good. Europe is good. A lot of, a lot of UK, I've got a lot of UK collectors. So um, I, re oh, throughout the pandemic, I signed on with a gallery in just outside of London. And so they have a, physical selection, which is nice. Um, so that people don't have to buy online and, you know, but yeah, those are good markets for me. Why do you think Sweden is so big for your art? No idea. Okay. Not, <laughs> not a clue. Sweden, like one of the happiest countries. Is it Sweden or is it Denmark? I'm uh, not sure. I feel like Sweden's one of the countries that is, um, like their people are one of the happiest countries. Um, I feel like that makes sense with your artwork because it's so you- Just light and joyful. Yeah, you it look is, at it and you smile. Mm -hmm. I'd be curious to see joyful. what Lowbrow does there. Like, are there people that go for like dark, deep emotional work too? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I, I like, I try and guess and I just can't figure it out. I really can't, you know, I'll be like, New York is going to love spikes. I'm like, no, they don't. They love sprinkles. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta try it out, figure it out. But your art is a little sad because it's not like someone enjoying the popsicle since it is falling on the floor and melting. Uh huh. It's more like the, because it is so joy, like when you look at it, it's so joyful. But on, on the other end, it's no one, the person that was going to enjoy that popsicle dropped it. You can hear a child screaming next to you, right? Exactly. I know. Oh, that, no. That's why the, the series is called Tragically Sweet. Oh. Um, <laughs> that's my, I mean, yeah. But it, <laughs> I actually will like, I'll hear a kid crying and I'll look for the dropped ice cream and I'm like, oh, it's beautiful. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so bad. I don't know. Uh, when, though, though it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> when you're... Um, you know, having to write an artist statement, what does that look like for you? Is it more about the, the material or the material, um, 
aspect of the popsicles or is there kind of a concept that you pull from? I'd say I tap more into the emotional, the nostalgia. Um, I get a really nostalgic feeling from everything. Um, I mean, some of my favorite memories were, um, you know, running behind the ice cream truck, you know, it's hot summer, you have no shoes on your feet are burning on the pavement, but like, you just want to get that bomb pop. And, and I just, I mean, those were so fun because you, you just get so fired up, you know, all the neighborhood kids and I don't know. And coincidentally, at my new studio, there's an ice cream truck that drives by every day. And I just like, that is the coolest thing ever. So yeah, nostalgia um, is big for me um, when creating these. So when I talk about my work, I definitely um, talk about that. But you know, people have so many questions because it's it's a, a little bit of a mystery material. So you know, I'll talk a little bit. I don't talk too much about my process just because you know it's unique. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you're thinking about new ideas for it um like I, I was just looking through your Instagram and there's the glitter piece that I love um do you sketch them out first do you uh, make smaller um experimental pieces like how's the the planning new idea side go for you so um, lately I've been doing a lot of collaborations. I, are you talking about the rhinestone piece that you yes. have? Yeah, so yeah. I came across this artist, Queen of Crystal. And um, I just said, you know, I, I use some crystals in my work but I like to maintain the natural resin look. So I just have them kind of organically crawl up the work but she just covers. So I said, hey girl, let's do something crazy. You know, I'm gonna send you work and you're gonna, you know, just coat it in bling, just go to town. So um, we did some things like that. Um, so that a lot of working with other artists is where some of the new ideas come from. I launched today like a handbag and sculpture combo, which is really fun. Um, but for my own um, growth, I think, it's, it's half, half. Um, sometimes it'll be a mistake that I make and I say, oh, I should, this is really cool. Like, let me go this route instead. And then I'll come up with a new idea or just the opposite. I say, I want to chrome this. Um, how do I make a shiny chrome pop? And so that, that one actually took like two years to figure out. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh my God. Yeah. I've been thinking about it for so long and I just, I, I mean, it's just, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, so anyway, um, and then the ones that I draw out, the only ones I draw out are for uh, custom orders. And I love doing the side by side because most of the time they're pretty close. Um, I try, um, of course, but yeah, I have um, a bunch of people with some really awesome ideas and um, I'll sketch it out for them and then create it. And then that often sparks a new idea too. That's, um, have you ever thought about doing public art? Um, with oh, yeah. your... Okay. Definitely. I I've submitted a to a bunch of calls for that. I just haven't, nobody's accepted me yet. <laughs> okay. That's one of those things. It's like, I wish I could just do it, but you know, you wait for the calls, you submit and then you get approved. Um, I am about to do one for a cruise ship, which is sort of public. Mm -hmm. um, how fun though. <laughs> yeah, that'd be super fun. Do you I get know, a, it's right uh, next to the cruise? bar. So cool. Are they gonna let you go on the cruise after it's done? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Is that be I'm not much of a that? cruise person. I grew up on boats um, and the weird thing is I kind of only trust my dad to captain a boat. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just so strange, but yeah, I think that's why I've never been a cruise person. So did you grow up in California then? I grew up in New York. I grew okay. up on Long Island, the South side near, um, there's like this cool, there's like the, the barrier beaches. And I don't know if you watch that, that documentary on Netflix called The Lost Girls, they found a bunch of dead bodies <laughs> along the beach. 
that's that was the beach where I hung out as a kid. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, we did some surfing. Um, my brother was semi pro, and we would go travel around, and watch him surf at contests and stuff, and that was really fun. Um, just a, I was a beach rat. But yeah, I moved out of New York. I don't know. It just wasn't me. I moved out for college and then just never went back. I kind of moved all over the place. College in New Orleans, um, then tried out San Francisco, then Europe for a couple of years, and then Los Angeles. Do you think- How long um, have you been out here for? Um, oh my gosh, 18 years. I've been in LA for 18 years, so. Do you think moving around helped, you know, create your art that you have today or no? Okay. No, I, it's weird. I mean, travel is definitely inspiration. Um, but for what I do now, not at all. Um, I don't know. I, I think the inspiration really comes from the material and the way that it's acting on that certain day. You know, I just have to feel it out. I, I go in and I start playing with it. And then I'm like, okay, this is where we're going today. Um, travel hasn't really inspired me to do <laughs> what I do now. But I love traveling. I mean, I'm so glad I got it all out of my system too before the pandemic. Yeah, right. I don't know if traveling would be the same, but I mean, like, good, good times mm -hmm. all over the world. Did you find it hard um, when COVID like first hit to continue doing your art? Did you ever have a, a, a time when you just wasn't creating as much or did you just not like have no skip? No, no, I did not skip a beat. First of all, I was still managing a gallery. So when the gallery closed, I was like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna just create all day. So <laughs> that's what I did. I just. I couldn't stop. There was no downtime. Um, and then I was like, you know, cause I had spent so much time sitting there in the gallery, working with other artists, working on their um, website and, you know, things like that, that I'm like, I'm going to work on my website. I'm going to do this, that, this, you know, like, and so I just kind of beefed up my, you know, just focus on my own marketing and things like that. And um, no, I have not skipped a beat. I'm, I'm also not, that social so um like going out to openings and um you know or, or whatever you know going out to eat and things like that didn't really it didn't bother me I was like okay cool I can totally spend days weeks whatever alone in my studio um creating so I don't know I know a lot of artists had a hard time but I didn't I love being mm -hmm. alone to do fun stuff create. I'm the same way Mm -hmm. I, any excuse like to not talk to people so I don't know why I have a podcast but it's I know it's good <laughs> no it's different it's so it's so different it's, I don't know what it is I'm I would say I'm kind of I would not shy I just you know if if it's like hey do you want to like stay home and watch Netflix or go out to eat I'm like Netflix yeah let's order pizza or whatever um any day um so yeah but podcast is different mm -hmm. I'm in here with just dogs so you know you didn't have to go anywhere for that yeah I mean you don't even know if I have pants on so <laughs> <laughs> that's true no no one knows I do but <laughs> <laughs> I so I have a, a question for you I think um because your work is so attractive I can see other artists looking at it and then making their own popsicle how has that happened and then how do you as an artist deal with that mm -hmm. um yeah it 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 happens definitely i when it happens i try to um i try to assume that they're going to use that as like a stepping stone and then start to create their own series out of it because i mean i totally don't mind um um somebody using my work as like inspiration for something else um actually recently um there was somebody who was copying 
using me as inspiration. And I, I blocked them because I was like, hey, don't use me. <laughs> Not that exact, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then she started doing her own thing. And I was like, great, good for you. You know, I mean, it, it's that that's the ideal. Um, what can you do? I mean, I have copyrights. Do I want to like go after people? I don't know. That's not really my thing. I don't know. You know. Yeah. And you're probably going after people that are poor anyway. So it's not like you're going to get a lot of money from suing them. Right. You to, yeah. You want but, to I mean, my have. pride and joy really are my big pieces. So <laughs> if somebody's copying the small ones. I am very confident in my skill level. Um, and the product that I put out, does it compare? I mean, I'm, I'm a sculptor, I'm not a crafter. So if I, if a crafter is like making work just like mine, I can't imagine that they would even know how to do certain things. And for sure, not the larger stuff. I, the way that I learned to do the larger stuff is I studied under a master resin artist that was, you know, well-known in the, um, 90s for um you know for resin i mean he's been working in resin making art for some of the most famous resin artists for years and so i mean that's just not something you can copy or you know you just you have to learn that from someone it's a it's definitely a skill mm -hmm. did you um, have to I mean, take him out to become the master what was now <laughs> did you have to like snuff him out no. <laughs> no. She's Is not gonna like say that she murdered her. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I know. I know all the secrets and <laughs> but I would love to do that one day for another artist is um share those secrets one day, you know, be able to um carry on the tradition, you know, when I started to not be able to do these things anymore, I would love to teach what I know to somebody, somebody grateful, somebody hardworking, and somebody that's not gonna use them to do exactly the same work as me, because that's mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. Be original. <laughs> yeah. That's the key. Very important. Well, it's nice that it doesn't sound like you get that worked up about people. Um using you as inspiration like I I feel like that's a great mindset for artists to take on because some it completely blocks their creativity when they see oh. other artists using oh, yeah. their work and then they're just so like focused on that that they let it be a crutch rather than just hey you know what happens I'm still gonna make my work because I'm the master of it just make sure you do it better mm -hmm. you know dream up something new, dream up something better. I don't know. I don't know how to give advice on that. It's not, it doesn't feel good. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Do you have a favorite piece of your own? <laughs> um, it changes almost on a daily basis. Um, did you see the new Chrome piece that I did? No. Is it on oh, your Instagram? It's on my Instagram. Okay. Um, it's just so Terminator 2. Um, oh, that's, I'm gonna, I don't know if and it's can see it. super reflective. It, the stick and everything, you know. Um, that's amazing. That's How did you do with that with Chrome? Do you have to melt the metal or like? Well, with ceramics, it is a hot process. And, that, you know, you've seen um, chromed ceramics. That's the ideal way to is to powder coat it with like a metal and then melt the metal. Um, but with resin, you can't do that. You have to do it differently. So it's a secret. I'm not going to tell because then yeah. people will copy me. <laughs> Especially when it took you two years to figure it out. Like, uh -huh. mm -mm. I'm not giving that <laughs> nugget away. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for being on. I oh, really appreciate you. it. Um, it's good to talk to you again. It's been two years. Yeah. And so, uh, Samuel, uh, and everyone listening, uh, we met, I think for the first time at the LA art show, mm -hmm. um, and you were in the booth with, um, the, it's not save art space. It's, um, who do you show with? Let me look at your Instagram. 
I know who it is. I'm just letting you guess. <laughs> yeah, you're making her struggle. I like it. It's wall space. Wall space. Yes. Yeah. And um, you should have let her 10 minutes oh, later. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Uh, I know there's a time limit on these things. So. <laughs> And uh, Plastic Jesus was in your same group, mm-hmm. uh, Amy Smith, who yep. we podcasted with. And then I saw your popsicle in the middle of the walkway. And I was like, who is this woman? I need to speak with her. And then the pandemic happened. And then I gave birth. And now mm-hmm. we're back to podcasting. And I'm like, all right, it's time to to get an episode in with you. Oh, I feel so honored. <laughs> no, I really like your work. I like I like the concept and the resin materials. It's very cool. They make me happy. Good. I want to see a seat. That's uh, it. I want to bring smiles. Yeah. But I do think uh, your work is great online, but it's different when you see it in person because you really can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get really fired up when I send something out because I'm like, oh, it's going to be so much better when they open it. You know, Mm -hmm. you hope. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, share again uh, where we can or where the listeners can find you, um, your Instagram and website. Yeah. Instagram is my first and last name. Betsy Enzensberger and same for the website and then there's links to everything there'll be a link to this podcast to my other interviews and things like that um you know lots of fun stuff lots of color glitter and things to make you smile (laughs) is there any future shows um coming up that that we should know about um there's not too much planned I do have something happening in Spain this summer um one of my galleries that takes me around Europe they um they have they opened up a space in Mallorca and they're working on something in the country I'm not sure where when or you know it's just uh it's kind of still up in the air but um I'm planning on shipping a bunch of stuff out there for that so that's it um I only have I think three physical galleries that are open right now um, one in LA, one in Des Moines, and one in uh, Dallas. So, um, yeah. How, and you don't have to answer this if you don't want mm-hmm. to, but has the pandemic affected your sales at all or? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I think people are wanting that little nugget of joy. So yeah, I mean, there's definitely been more interest. Okay. Well, thank you again for being on. Really appreciate it. Really nice talking to you. Um, For people who want to find the podcast, you can go to missartworld.com. You can check out our Instagram. And we are also on YouTube at Miss Art World. Um, If you want to watch us talk to each other through Zoom, (laughs) that's there for you. Um, But also visit our website for this episode and any other episodes you can also listen to our episodes wherever you find your podcast so um i guess if they're listening they already know that yeah. so, but yeah. tell people to share and you know oh uh, yeah <laughs> share, share the podcast <laughs> leave us a comment uh go uh give betsy a follow um and thank you as always for listening Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.